I'm not sure if it's a fluke, but get the net. Get the net. That's a fluke. Oh. Oh my God, Kenny. You're fucking. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Yeah. Oh my god. Good god, dude. I tried my hardest. Get him in, he's not in yet, dude. He's, in there. he's not really in there. <laughs> I tried my hardest. Alright, so that was a very questionable net job you just saw right there. Uh, that fluke came up at the worst angle, and Kenny's timing was a little bit off. and uh, It was ugly, but we got it in the boat, and it was a 23 incher. Uh, that was the first keeper of the day between me, Kenny, and BBC. It was the three of us out here on the Viking, which is a party boat in Montauk. And basically it was a full day of fishing for flounder and sea bass. Uh, and then there was going to be a night striper session. Uh, you know, we were going to fish mm -hmm. far out for the fluke and sea bass, almost to Rhode Island, uh, Block Island, I'm sorry, and then come back That'd to nice. uh, Montauk to fish for bass at night. And I hopped on this trip last minute. Uh, Kenny and BBC had this planned for like six months or something. They booked this trip like six months in advance. They chartered it or whatever. But uh, it's dead calm out there. No drift. Uh, I started off by using a chicken rig. That was what I got the first keeper of the day on. And then after that, I just jigged the rest of the day with a uh, two-ounce bucktail. Uh, a little later, I'll used a three-ounce bucktail. That was my second keeper of the day. Another healthy, healthy oh, one. Did was using gulp for the first part of the day, but then mackerel appeared under the boat, and a little later in this video, you'll see that we were doing really good on the mackerel strips. You guys don't have any extra gulp grubs on board, do you? No, we don't really use them out here. Oh yeah, here we go. Here, let me measure them real quick. Just for the hell of it. Trying to keep... 20, 25. Right. Yeah. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Captain. That's the biggest flick I got all year. 25. He's kind of light. He's like a light 25. Bigger than my other one, yeah. Longer. Maybe like the same weight. So I didn't have any 6-inch gulp grubs on this trip. I borrowed one from BBC. Uh, you heard me ask the mate if they had any extra on board. And then you also maybe heard the mate say they don't really use them out there, which is just like insanity. But uh, that was the same gulp grub that I got the first two keepers on. I ended up catching like five keepers on the same gulp grub before the mackerel appeared. I'll be all right. If my reel malfunctions, yeah, I might. Son. That's the one, son. I hope it's not any kind of f***ed up fish like a skate. If it's a skate, I'm not going to be happy. That's how the skates get you, though. Awkward angle too coming up. I'm gonna try to get him to swim out front. Mmm. Yeah, Woo! I'll take that one. That's a nice one. Damn. That was that was awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Measure that bad boy. Here's a nice one. All right, let's measure him. 27. I bet. Uh, 26. Going big sea bass. I think so. Yeah. All right, that sea bass is one of the biggest sea bass I ever caught. It taped out to like 20 and a half inches, uh, probably four pounds, five, something like that. I don't know. One of my biggest I've ever caught. Um, on the gulp, and then uh, BBC got a nice fluke right here. It gets a solid five pounder or something. And it was around this time that like whatever limited gulp supply I had was really dwindling. And um, then Kenny saw some mackerel under the boat and he pointed him out he told me like get your epoxy jig we had seen some mackerel around like some people on the other boat or around the boat had caught some mackerel so 
So I dropped down the epoxy jig, 7 8 ounce epoxy, same thing you use from the beach. And uh, started jigging that around, trying to catch some of these max. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh! No! Yeah, and I got tangled, but I'm back. They're still down there. They'll find this. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Nice. Bonito! 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 Hell yeah, dude! Hell yeah, dude! Now we're talking! Bonito! <laughs> it's amazing, dude. It's amazing. The epoxy. On the yellow. On the yellow. Sick, dude. Sick. That's sick. No, I mean, Just guy. it was probably a mixture. There's one. What do we got? I think it's another Benito. Oh, look at them all. Dude, this is amazing now. This is, this is hot now. Ooh, he's squeaking. Hell yeah. Oh, dude. Bonito. Amazing. That's for Bill. Let me stiff arm that, dude, when we move. I'm stiff arming it. Oh, yo, they're down there, dude. Yeah. Oh, look at them all, dude. Hell yeah. Dude, no. All right, so I have never, ever, ever fished Montauk before. Really, very rarely do I get out into inshore waters, you know, deeper than like 50 feet of water. I take my kayak out along the beaches in the fall and the spring and stuff, but like out in the summertime in New England and stuff, you know, I don't know what's going on out there. But it turns out these chub mackerel are very common, if not prolific, among all the waters out there. Jersey, New York, you know, those are the two places I've seen them. I'm pretty sure even further east than that, you know, they're still pretty prolific. But um, I know that they would make good bait. Uh, just any fresh fish is going to make good strip baits. So I was really happy about them just to like make the strip baits with them. And then the bonito was awesome too because that's just like I've only ever caught one bonito in my life. That was probably the second one I caught in my life. I think this was before the Jamaica trips that I was going on. Now we're talking. Speaking my language. The max. To hit up AJ and be like, yo dude, got that bait. Damn. Huh? No one else is catching? Yeah, I think you're right. They're not saying no mackerel, I'll tell you that. Benito. Yeah, you wanna try? No. Oh, yeah, I like it. Popping mackerel, dude. Just pop them. All right, so this is how we were stripping these things up. Basically, we filleted the mackerel. We got two nice fillets off each side of the mackerel. Well, one fillet off each side of the mackerel, two total. And then I used my scissors to cut strips. I was cutting about three strips out of each fillet. Therefore, each mackerel was good for roughly six strips. That was here to start, at least. Later in the trip, I just started cutting the fillets in half. I was getting four strips off each mackerel. But uh, I was tipping them on the bucktail, and this is how easy it was. Bam! Look at that. Ah, oh, I think it was a bass. Oh, this sea bass will go nuts for this mackerel, dude. Damn, the mackerel is what's up. Woo! Came right off. Small, right? I imagine it's... So the mate took that fish to measure it. It was definitely short. Threw it back. Uh, that was first drop with the mackerel. And then this was second drop with the mackerel. Oh yeah, dude. This is some... That's the... That is the bait right there. This 
Be best. No. Oh yeah, dude, sunfish. Bring it up high. I just brought that up like 10 feet and then dropped it back down. He was right on it. Damn. I wish the uh, mola, should I snag him? Yeah, yeah. You guys seen there's a bunch of jellies here. Oh yeah, nice. Fat ass mackerel. All right, so in this video, you're going to see me keep six fluke, I think, and the fish were dibbied up uh, between the rest of the boat. There was a good amount of people on the boat who didn't catch their limits. Uh, they were actually pretty, I don't want to say futile. There was, there was a handful of people on the boat who didn't catch anything, and the reason is because when there's no drift like this, uh, it can be really tough to catch. My technique is I cast out as far as I can, and I jig it back to the boat, and that's all I do all day. I pound them all day. If you're dropping straight down under the boat when there's no drift, you're not going to catch on a day when there's no drift like this. Uh, so uh, these fish were all fulfilled for the boat limit. And uh, this was when it got interesting. I'm using my GoPro Hero 3 now because GoPro Hero 5 was out of battery. No flow, no rhythm. It's just like insanity. Oh, here we go. Oh. Get ready for this fluke, son. Yo, hook a brother up with a net. Yeah. Oh, here we go. He's trying to make me lose the fish. Oh. Woo! That's a nice one. Oh yeah. Hey! That's a slob. That's a fat slob. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I was supposed to catch it. Hell yeah. Uh, nine. Nine? I'll give that one nine. Yeah? No freaking way. Uh, here, let me measure him while he's down there real quick. Let me see what he is. Oh, he's 28. No, he's not. Uh, 27 and a half. Yeah. Uh, he's like, Dober's. 27 and a half, he's thick. I'll put him on a scale, I'll find out. Scale him up. You want a scale? Yeah. yeah Hell yeah. How long is it? 27 and 0.6. I say seven and a half. Seven and a half. Of, uh, damn, there's another nice one. Have you been changing it? Have yeah, you? yeah. Today? Yeah, all day. Damn, that's a good one, huh? No? That rod ain't Hollywood, Ken, Kenny. That fish was not Hollywood. You saw him hit that, hit that, drop it, spit it out. Son, that might be pool fish. 27 and a half. Oh. The a ding Oh. Uh oh, Captain. Uh oh, Captain. He's getting hot. It's getting hot. Eight and change. I'll take the net again. Dropping them. Dropping like flies right now. Kenny sucks at fishing. I don't know if you know. I suck tonight too, bro. It's okay. Sometimes you have to suck. Do you really want to that I'm. Uh, my much? personal no, net not friend. Five foot tall, but like five foot three. Yeah. Another nice that's all mackerel. So after the fluke fishing, we went over towards Montauk Point to try for bass. We got there with some daylight left. The tide was slack, and I had a feeling that the striper fishing was going to be futile, so we were jigging for scup. And it turns out, you know, Montauk Point, real good for bass, but it's also real good for scup. Oh, boy. Oh, sea bass. Lined up, everybody. Uh, maybe it's a. Oh, okay, yeah, it's a pork chop. Dang. Dang. Dang, man. Nice porgies. Dang. 
Why are we leaving? You gonna flap her that? <laughs> nice porgy. Mm. Oh, that's a chop. Meh. Oh, dang. It's pinning you. Oh, that's one. Maybe not. Was it bass? Uh. That might be the one we're looking for. Dang. That's a porgy. That's the one. Dang. In the tail. <laughs> yeah, it's still a good one. That's awesome. He got it. This is the one. That's a porgy. Oh. Uh oh. I don't think so. Ah, uh, maybe. I think it's a sea bass. Now it's a sea bass. Oh no. Hey, hey, hey take that. Keeper. Once they're a little fat like that one, you know they're a keeper. That one's close enough. Mmm. Mm -mm. I'm feeling good about this one. Feeling good about them, yeah. Solid. Very solid. Ooh. Them spines are probably like sheep's head spines. Very sharp. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, this was definitely one of the better party boat trips I've ever been on. We did fish for bass after this. We actually fished till 1 in the morning. I caught zero bass. The boat had about 10 all together. A couple blue fish. Uh, I think the biggest bass on the boat was in the low 30 pound range. We were drifting eels here at Montauk Point. And uh, Kenny got one 30 incher. BBC got like a 33 incher. But uh, yeah, we didn't do so hot on the bass. Uh, the bow and the stern is really where you wanted to be for the bass. But uh, fluke season is winding down. New Jersey only has a week left in the fluke season. They close September 5th. New York, you got a few weeks to get up there to Montauk and get on some big doormats. Uh, I think season closes September 21st, and uh, yeah, man, August is quickly coming to an end. It is almost September. It is almost fall. The hardtails, the striped bass, the bluefish, all the good stuff, you know, the bait spraying, we're getting there, so I don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.